Hello, welcome to Book Zone. I'm Nina Sebastian. With me in the studio today is Sanchita Islam. She has a new book out, The Cloud Catcher. Let's talk about it. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. So, for somebody who hasn't even opened this book before, what is it? It is a poem, is it a story, what is it? Well, basically, it's a, an amalgamation of images that I've sketched while I've been on the tube, the bus, bored at dinner parties. And uh, it's a story of Sophie, who's one of my characters who features in my work as an artist, who wants to live in the sky and catch clouds. And I think basically it's a metaphor that most people would like to do that. It's about the dreams and where we'd like to be. And uh, that's basically the book. So it's a book so that you can dip into and out of. So, I mean, I'm just looking through, and, and obviously it's a lot of illustrations that are done in, in like a pen, like a charcoal form. Um, Pen and, pen and ink. And, and what's the inspiration behind it? Did you, you know, did you wake up one morning and thought, you know what, I have this fabulous story or a fabulous poem about a girl called Sophie? Well, I just started doing these sketches. I did the first one at Sketch um, in the parlour, which is where the book launch is going to be next uh, Wednesday. And then they just evolved. And now I've got like sketchbooks full of these drawings, with these fantasy landscapes. And it was my way of taking flight, you know, from reality. And then the story about Sophie just came to me while I was on the on the train back from Cornwall. And that's it really. And who is Sophie? Sophie's the dreamer, you know, she's the dreamer that lives in all of us. The dreamer that, that wants to live in the sky and catch clouds. And is this a bit of an escape for you? Yeah, yeah. I mean they're different characters that feature in my work and principally an artist. And uh, she's she's one of them. Now and you you have a remarkable story, um, in that you're very classically trained as an artist and so on, but you also have this complete polar side of you, which is, you know, you, you studied at the London School of Economics and this amazing degree and obviously had a place at Oxford. Uh, where does all that sit with you? Well, being Asian, you know, kind of encouraged to be quite academic. So I was very academic and also very artistic. So I was torn between going into the arts or, or going to university. In the end, I went to university. In a way, it was a good thing because uh, my area of interest is, is the developing world, you know, politics. So I've done a lot of work in developing countries. You know, I made a lot of films in Bangladesh, films in Indonesia, Malaysia, Cambodia, Vietnam, Nepal, and the other books which I've done are more socio-political. So it all ties in, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, it seems quite disjointed and disconnected, but well, it isn't. Well, you've got several books out, haven't you? About five yeah. or six now you've published? I've published six books. I have four books out this year, and um, I've got a, a new book out as well. Uh, it's an inversion of uh, Pope's quote, um, Eternal Sunshine of a Spotless Mind. My book's called Eternal Pollution of a Dented Mind. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a very heavy book. Tell us about it. When I think there's no light without darkness, there's no darkness without light, and it's a bit of a fallacy to think that, you know, everything should be positive, everybody should be smiling, it's very erroneous, because look what's going on in the world, and actually I think you can um, see truth in the darkness if you look hard enough, but people are very much into, you know, hedonistic, debauched lifestyle, I have a lot of fun, let's go out, party, but um, I think darkness is intrinsically interesting, but it's not all dark, it's just... Um, I just thought it would be an interesting idea to invert the quote. Well, why don't we touch a bit also on something that's quite close to your heart, you were telling me earlier, the socio-political elements. I mean, one of the things you went and did was you went to uh, Bangladesh, Malaysia, and you, you, you filmed women and children in poverty situations. Tell us about that. Yeah, and uh, that book, Connecting Kids, which is also out this year, is a, it was a book and film commissioned by the Arts Council and the British Council, where it's a dissection of poverty. So I was making a uh, film and interviewing kids in Bangladesh who lived in the Bosti, the slums, mm -hmm. uh, street kid musicians in Jakarta, and uh, kids living on the estates of Kuala Lumpur in London. So I was exploring the parallels between them, and the common denominator that linked the kids together was the fact that they were all Muslim and poor. What was interesting is that the, the kids who were most depressed were the Bengali kids living on the estates. Why? It was interesting. I mean, comparatively, they were they were the most affluent. Apathy, ghettoization, um, loss of motivation, um, and the happiest kids were, the, you know, the the other ones, 
the, the street kid musicians and the, 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 the kids in Malaysia. That had literally nothing. That had literally, you know, living in a, a room like that, the whole family. But it was amazing. Their places were immaculate. Mm. And at some point, I would get stopped by the police in Bangladesh, you know, because they said I'd need permission. So I was on the run filming. Permission to film? Yeah. And I, I would get very angry because I'm, you know, I'm making a film about these kids living in the slums, mm. for Christ's sake. Mm. Um, so it was a bit of kind of cat and mouse. But once I got into the, into the slums, I had to go along this pole into their homes. They couldn't touch me. So it was very much on the edge, which is a lot of my films. I've done 14 films now. It's very much about that. I mean, I am a painter, but in a way, with my writing, I'm painting with words. I paint people's lives. Then even with my fantasy stuff, it's still very much rooted in my experiences of the real world. Okay. Well, let's go back to the cloud catcher and what you, you, your message is here. I mean, is, is there a specific message to your work? Well, I'm very driven by aesthetics. I'm very driven by, you know, the realm of the imagination. Um, but also, I think with this book, it is, you know, ultimately, where do we want to get to in life? Where do we want to be? And I think most of us feel calmer when we're near nature. Mm. When, you know, when you, like today's a beautiful day, you just look up at the sky and you feel, whoa. And that's priceless. I mean, you, you can't, money can't buy that kind of feeling that the sunshine can give you, that the clouds can give you, that a blue sky can give you. So it's just, that this is what this book is about. It's like, open your eyes and where do you want to get to? It's all there. It's at your fingertips. It's really quite simple. Whereas we can often be looking down when really we should be, you know, dreaming about living in the sky, catching clouds. In fact, looking at the clouds and catching clouds. Wow. Yeah. Sanchita Islam, thank you very much for coming in to talk to us. Once again, that is The Cloud Catcher, author Sanchita Islam, published by Chipmunker Press, and it's available now. I'm Nina Sebastian. This is Book Zone.